eyes, how many times we've seen with our eyes, the father pulls up, blaring music, pumping loud tunes, the subwoofers are pumping and the masoom children are sitting in the car, all hijabed up, ready to go to school, come back from school and the father has no consideration, I could have used this opportunity, I could have educated my children, I could have asked them, how's your madrasa going, how's your education going, son what do you want to be when you grow older? Now that doesn't mean that perhaps the guy hasn't done that. I'm saying that every day you have this opportunity, you could have capitalized on that opportunity. Why not use that drop to and from madrasa to ask the child, what did you do today? What did you learn? What do you want to do when you're, how, what are you planning to do today? Give me your top two goals for today. What do you want to achieve? Constantly reaffirm, constantly give encouragement, constantly give ta'qeed and emphasis to things which are good. Children are wanting the attention of the parents and we are in this zamana more than before because a child thinks attention is getting likes on Facebook, we're growing up with that mizaj. So the more people that you get commenting on your post, liking your post, that is, that is acceptance, that is your validation and when that does not happen even from the mother or father, that child feels insecure. That child will use his insecurity, her insecurity, to vent it out and look and be an attention seeker to get attention because the mother and father didn't show them that attention. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar, he himself would go on all fours, put Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhu on his back and he would walk around. Umar radiallahu anhu walks in and he says, what a fabulous, what a great conveyance. Meaning he's bigging up the Prophet to say how fortunate Hassan and Husayna radiallahu anhuma that they are sitting on the back of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and he's you know walking around and Hassan and Husayn on the back. Can you imagine Mufti Sab doing this bichara? Hafiz Sab, if I did this, someone would say, Yaar, is, is that the Shaykh? Is he doing the bayan? That guy there, that guy. <laughs> he's doing the speech. Mufti Sab, chal, tasbih, chal, chal Quran. Like our, our thinking is really distorted. So we have to remind ourselves of these hadith. Another one I'll remind you now, I've said, oh, let me finish it first. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, what a great convenience. He said, Umar, no, 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 no. What great passengers. Showing affection. I love them. And he would call him in a gathering, give them a kiss. Someone did that. Because we have an image, a persona, and a, a thing that I want people to see. Mashallah, public, you are one figure. Private, you are another figure. How many people become badanam bichare? In public, they have a, a rob. And behind Allah ma'afirmai, check their IP address, what on earth they're doing. But Allah, toba, toba. Allah, Allah ma'afirmai. May Allah save us. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq that our... Allah ta'ala make islah of our batin and bring that on our zahir. Let it not be that we have a sense of astaghfirullah, of, of hypocrisy or double standard. While I'm touching on this, because I mentioned about children and parents and I said how the Prophet ﷺ himself said, I don't think it's unmanly, I have to go in there with Rob and show who's boss, no that's not, yes there is, you are the man of the house, undoubtedly, you've got a maqam, you've got a position, you've got authority, but that doesn't mean you cannot connect with those children, that was a golden opportunity I mentioned in the car, if you didn't do that, connect at home, but there are many children who just don't connect with their parents at all. Now I know I'm just veering off the subject, but let me say one more thing and jump back on. I said to you, imagine me going around with a couple of kids on my back. <laughs> People would question whether to sit in the bayan, but check out this one. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I forget and I, I, I don't recall the, the ghazwa that happened. May Allah forgive my hafza, but Aisha radiallahu ta'ala an, anha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he said to the sahaba, he goes, carry on, with, we're just catching up sort of thing. So once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was behind, and, they, and with Umm uh, al-Mu'min in Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha, he said to her, should we have a race? A race. So they had a sprint, 100 meters, 50 meters, I don't know how far it was, they, they had a sprint. Aisha radiallahu anha beat him. But just think of that for a moment. If you saw Bichara local Imam Sahib running with his wife, he'd be Badanam Bichara, wouldn't he? Let's be honest. We'd say, oh, Molvi Sahib no kya hai yaar, Zunani Allah nasna. It seems odd. It seems a bit odd. We'd never even, it wouldn't even be, it wouldn't even be conceivable, conceivable for us. 
Astaghfirullah, I don't want to mention which will start because he'll, he'll shout at me if I say his name. So I'll just mention one of my start. Alhamdulillah, may Allah ta'ala bless him and honor him. But what happened was, was um, Alhamdulillah, they, they were about to have a child. So the Khush Khabri women were there and they said, Alhamdulillah, Maulana, so and so, his wife is about to have a baby. Someone said, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Maulbi Sahib, he kam kar Astaghfirullah. Oh, Maulbi Sahib is doing, what's Maulbi Sahib up to? Bhai, Maulbi Sahib ki bivi hai, agar wo ya, if a person is not going to do, go to the halal rasta, then the haram path is open. Because it's quite a vast thing and you need to tackle on a different few things. It's not easy to convey this message, especially when the message is so deep-rooted that money is success, money is success, cars are success, buildings are success. Our family even tell us, if you don't have a good education, you're going to be bagharat for your whole life. Oh, look, look at their children, look at their children, look how proud they made their parents. Look at the money they've got. Who are you? What are you going to become? What have you got? What are you, how are you going to show your face in society? And parents think the more they nag us, they're going to get results. And it creates enmity. And then what does that make us feel? If I don't, accept, if I don't achieve this, I'm going to be hated. So you grow up with an inferiority complex. Our parents psychologically damage us because of their own insecurities. And I don't need you to nod your heads, but I know for a fact 90% of the people have gone through this. You get some form of psychological abuse. You don't, you're not loved if you're not producing money, you're not producing results. If you haven't got a good job, you'll always be looked at as the sheep of the family. Yeah, this one didn't get education. Like in Masha, this is Putur, mashallah. He's got a real job.